So I have a question. Mainly I have the answer, but I cannot act on it. So I would like to see your opinion about um, how can I just let go of the ego trap? What is the ego trap? Um, constant thoughts that I am right and uh, right about know. what or whom? Mm, some things happened which I didn't like. Do you want to argue with someone? Yes. Good. Is the guy bigger and stronger than you? No, I can beat him up. That's the problem. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, I would have suggested that you directly confront him, 120K, all muscles, and you say, I'm right, you're wrong, and then you run. So, otherwise, uh, if you could win, it's dangerous, because it becomes an even bigger ego trip. That's Therefore, the that's the trap. Okay, turn it around and say, uh, am I only right? Or is it possible that a little bit he or she is right too? Yes, it is, and that's my problem too, because I don't want to admit it. In a way, you already did. Yeah. You just can't accept it that you admitted that. Yeah. Okay. True. So, when you see this, you already reflect on this frustration and this little anger that's inside. And like Nobody anymore. wants to be angry in the long run because it consumes you, it burns you, it hurts you too. If you are kind of honest enough and you see what anger does, it's, it's really destructive. Self-destructive too. So, first is attachment. You attach to anger. Oh, I'm right and I'm going to beat the shit out of you. So, that's attachment. This point is already reflected. You already reflect on it. Now you chant, chant, sit, sit, etc., etc. Then you can put it down. That's no anger. No anger. That means you can transform that energy into something else, into some other action. And eventually you will be able to transform it into help. Because you realize that if you want to take away this karma, you should be able to help this person not right away, and not romantic, you know, say, I am now the great Bodhisattva. No, 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 no. That's very dangerous. See the potential where you can help that person, even indirectly. Or just try not to cause any harm. Usually in these relationships, we do not realize our own contribution to it, how it became so bad. Now, if you do see how you contributed to that formation, how the relationship ended up in this way, then without any sense of guilt, you can point it out, like a car mechanic points at a, a faulty alternator or a battery, or an oil, oil filter, and you replace that with something, okay? So, instead of just feeling resentment and uh, haughtiness and wanting to fight, you say, I actually do not want to relate to this person anymore. How do I let that go? And you realize that you have to finish it. And finishing it means no more interaction, at least not in this way. And then you have to contribute to the completion of that relationship, whatever is at your end. Because it's mutual. It's never one-sided. Even if you see your own contribution just 1%, and 99 is the other, it's never like that. Mm -hmm. But you see that 1% through that hole of you no know, vision, you can perceive what your contribution to that relationship was and, and you turn it around. Okay? Many times we want to be just right. We want to be correct. And we make a lot of enemies. Same. So, how do we just see the world as it is, our job as something very natural in it, and we walk our path without antagonizing anybody, without opposites, you know, views, without strong polarized opinions, without any I in it. That's why we practice. Because we have this really interesting seventh consciousness, the manas, which is the difference maker, the, the distinguisher. And 
we have to distinguish between, say, glass and water. They belong together, but we distinguish because we drink the water, not the glass. Just like that, we have to distinguish between uh, food that we can eat and food that actually would poison us. We also have to distinguish between our own responsibility and somebody else's responsibility. So the wisdom of distinguishing is very important. Now, the same engine, if it goes into overdrive, we discriminate. This person's good, that person's bad, that color's good, that color's bad, etc., etc. So it's the same instrument, but one is optimal function, distinguishing, the other is overdrive, discrimination, and the under function is when you cannot distinguish. And if you cannot distinguish, you try to eat the clay instead of the bread. And that's a huge problem. There are mental disorders like that. So try to live in this middle way that you see his or her karma as that and your karma as yours, but you also see the interaction. And then you can fill up the blanks and take off the excess and take this very complicated and entangled human relationships in a simple way and look at it as something really created by you and the other person, not something as fate or destiny. That I have to be like this because the other is like that. Okay? So see it in its created, relative, causal nature instead of the absolute, the given, something outside of you. And these three phases are important. From attachment, go to reflection, then liberation, then transformation. It's possible. It's hard work, but it's possible. Okay? You're welcome.